Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. Welcome to part two of our large adrenal mass evaluation. And we left off last time looking at a couple of cases with hemorrhage. We know there are many reasons for hemorrhage, Coumadin, trauma. Usually those are fairly easy. You have a history or you think you might have a history. They also kind of tend to be oval. Other causes of hemorrhage, particularly when there's an underlying mass, can be more difficult. They're larger. They often are of mixed attenuation because often they're picked up incidentally, not at the time of hemorrhage, but can be picked up later on. Sometimes, obviously, it's at the time of hemorrhage, patient presents with right upper quadrant or left upper quadrant pain, and we see what looks like a hematoma. This is a large mass in the right adrenal gland. You can go through a large differential. On the contrast scan, there's a blush in the lesion. But what's going on? Uh, there's no history of malignancy. I don't see much else on the CT scan. Um, as you go through the images, it does wash out a little bit. It's well defined. What could this be? Well, eventually, couldn't really figure it out. Patient was anxious, so they went in laparoscopically. Though, again, you could not say this was not an ACC, but they went in, they resected it. This was an adrenal adenoma that had previously bled. So I showed you a case before. Adenomas can be large. We've seen them in the 10 to 11 centimeter range. They can uh, be large without bleeding, but especially if adenomas bleed, they can be large and they can be a great mimicker of malignancy. So it's a challenge. Here's another case. Patient vague abdominal pain, large, large, large right adrenal mass. You can see why I would think about a carcinoma. It doesn't look like a field because it's not vascular enough. You go through differential, but you worry about malignancy surely in this patient based on size. Maybe a little bit of peripheral enhancement. I did not see anything else in any other organ, but that was a hematoma. Sometimes hematomas, when they're older, they calcify, like this case, left adrenal hematoma. Uh, that makes it very easy. Coarse calcifications, whether it's in the liver or spleen or kidney or adrenal, like this case, typically means it's an old hematoma. And I've seen a few of these. I've also seen hematomas where the adrenal shape is maintained and the adrenal's calcified. So we do see it occasionally, and those are not the ones we see very commonly, and those are surely not the ones that are problematic. It's the case before solid mass, no sign of bleeding, and concern for malignancy. Other unusual benign lesions, adrenal ganglion neuroma. It's a benign tumor arising from neural crest tissue, typically arises in the medulla, but it does not secrete a specific hormone. It's usually an incidental finding. Now, adrenal ganglion neuromas are one of those lesions that are large in the five to nine centimeter range, though I have to admit my experience was typically in the three centimeter range. 20 plus years ago, we wrote an article about that. They were typically low density. Sometimes they enhanced as you went from arterial to venous to delayed. They could contain calcifications and were not invasive. But here was a recent case. You can see the spleen is large, mainly because it's pushed upward by this really large left adrenal mass. Solid mass, a little bit of vascularity. You would look carefully to make sure it's coming from the adrenal and not the stomach and not a retroperitoneal primary or not pancreas or kidney, but it's adrenal. And then, of course, you say, what could this be? This is, you know, 13, 14 centimeters, it looks like. Well, solid maybe an area of necrosis as you get to the later phase imaging. But boy, this looks all in the world, highly suspicious for adrenal cortical carcinoma. There's areas of necrosis. I'm kind of stuck. This looks like a malignancy. Here it is on the cinematic. You see the spleen, then you see the mass with areas of cystic change, but a very large solid mass with cystic changes. Again, ACC, Top of my list, metastasis, if the patient had a known tumor like melanoma or hepatoma, which can give big mats, but this is probably almost too big. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of stuck at ACC. Uh, really nice splaying of the vessels. This was eventually resected and was a ganglion neuroma. So again, you could see why sometimes these larger lesions, you're just not going to be right. 
You may not even be in the ballpark. Ganglion neuroma was not something I was thinking about in this case. And the article from a lifetime ago, adrenal ganglion neuromas are an uncommon benign tumor. The diagnosis requires either biopsy or surgical removal for documentation. That was 1997. If I add quickly, that's 27 years ago. So our management of these tumors has not changed in 27 years. Now, if we move over to malignancy, typically we're going to be thinking big masses. METS is a possibility, pheo, lymphoma, neuroblastoma. But typically when we think of large masses, we think about primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. We mentioned before that ACCs, when they're hormonally active, Cushing's is the most common, and those may be the smaller tumors. So typically, when you have a large ACC, it means it's not hyperfunctioning, because if it was hyperfunctioning, it would have presented earlier. And so there's a range of things, hypertension, bruising, trunkal obesity, diabetes. So there are a number of different things you could think about in terms of these. And so we talk about how the importance of clinical history, again, incidental findings, it may be only when you speak to the patient that you realize it was an incidental finding, yes, but the patient had other symptoms. In this article by Ahmed, adrenal cortical carcinoma is a large, 70% or over six centimeters, size of tumor, pattern of enhancement, and degree of heterogeneity by CT are all important predictors of the malignant potential of a lesion. ACC typically heterogeneous by CT with mixed intratumoral attenuation. Again, um, CT has a high sensitivity for detecting malignancy, but specificity is relatively low. Again, think about that ganglion aroma. Okay, that's the answer, and I knew it was a mass that needed to come out, but I was still thinking about an ACC. Now, in terms of mimics of ACC, I showed you cases before. I showed you big adenomas. I showed you hemorrhage. I just showed you a ganglion aroma. Theos, particularly theos that are not that vascular, can be an issue. Metastasis, particularly tumors like hepatoma and melanoma, which give large mets, can be problematic. Adrenal lymphoma, particularly primary, gives large adrenal lesions, though often they are bilateral, and occasionally hemangioma, though that indeed is rare. If we look at this case, large right adrenal mass, it's solid, a little bit of mixed attenuation. There's some neovascularity even seen on the routine coronal views. The right kidney is pushed downward. We talk about looking at MIP for vascularity. Here's the MIP imaging. Look at that neovascularity within the mass. What I could say here is this is malignant. It's probably an ACC. It could be a sarcoma, but sarcomas are so rare. Not that ACC is that common, but sarcomas are really uncommon. So to me, this looks malignant. ACC is my best guess. Here's another case. Varied enhancement, solid and cystic, large mass. Not much else you should be thinking about in this example. Very large tumor pushing on the patient's right kidney. And here it is on the sagittal view, the areas of necrosis, very nicely shown. Here's a patient who presented with abdominal pain, but the patient had a history of ulcerative colitis, and the clinical presentation really was suspected flare of UC. And there is abnormalities in the patient's descending colon from the ulcerative colitis, but then you see the large left adrenal mass, some vascularity, some faint calcification, and you can see how large this is. It kind of has that shape where you really do worry about an ACC. And again, the patient had no other symptoms. It wasn't like the patient had Cushing's or back pain. Everything seemed to be related to the colon. You can see it on later phase imaging. This was a large primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. Areas of necrosis, modeled enhancement, and calcification are all nicely seen. And here it is as you go toward the washout value. You have to look at this case and really be thinking hard that it is primary ACC unless proven otherwise. And here it is just showing you the coronals on the routine coronal and then showing you the mixed density of the mass on the cinematic rendering, very nicely showing you the areas of necrosis in the tumor. 
Another case, primary ACC, again, vascularity, which will show better on the MIP, large mass, it's solid. The vascularity is sort of toward the edge with necrosis toward the center. And here it is again as you look at the MIP imaging on the uh, right as we look at the volume imaging. And again, you can see the neovascularity present. And again, best diagnosis, primary adrenal cortical carcinoma, which this indeed was. Now, the central necrosis, let me at least address that. I showed you an example of a ganglion aroma which had necrosis. You can see METs with necrosis. You could see pheochromocytomas with cystic areas and central necrosis. You could see primary ACCs with central necrosis. It's very common, but uh, in, a, in many things, particularly ACC, but it's really not diagnostic for the reasons I mentioned. Now, another case, back pain and discomfort. There's a large, non, large adrenal mass on a non-contrast study. Contralateral left adrenal looks good. Here it is again, big adrenal mass. Even on the non-contrast, you're going through a differential. Of course, a pheo is a possibility. 100%, you can't exclude that this is a benign lesion like a big atypical adenoma or something in that category, an old hemorrhage. With contrast, arterial phase, minimal enhancement, not very vascular at all. Again, here it is, same thing, arterial phase in the coronal and a little bit of the vascularity very nicely shown. And then as you go to the venous phase, the central necrosis is better seen. So perhaps that's one of the other things that's true, not always in ACC, but also in other tumors. The uh, venous phase rather than arterial or non-contrast is what's best gonna show the necrosis becomes because some areas of the tumor enhance and some just don't. This could be metastasis. Theoretically, I can't rule out a pheochromocytoma. Uh, this was a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma, about six centimeters, not the largest and not the smallest. So a real good example of an ACC. Now, going back to that article from Mayo, only about 13% of their large adrenal masses were ACCs. Again, ACCs um, are often younger patients, but it's a small percent of carcinomas. It's an aggressive carcinoma, often in younger females. There's really, um, besides surgery, there's really no good therapy. There is one chemo agent, uh, mitomycin, but that really doesn't work all that well. Now, I mentioned one of the challenges at times between an ACC is a MET, particularly from melanoma or hepatoma. Again, one of the things with METs, you'll often have a history. So if you have a history of a primary, you always have to think about metastatic disease. Now, sometimes a lot of the METs look very similar. There's certain tumors like metastatic renal cell. Most of the time it's from clear cell. And just like the pancreas, the METs in the adrenal would be very vascular. Occasionally hepatoma can be very vascular as well. Now, adrenal mets commonly occur in patients with lung, breast, kidney, melanoma, and colon, but almost anything can go to the adrenal gland. Um, if patients only have adrenal metastasis, occasionally the lesions will be resected. At times, the adrenal met may present before the patient's primary tumor, or they don't know the patient has a primary tumor, and it's only on the workup of the renal or adrenal mass rather, that you'll be able to reach the correct diagnosis. Here's a patient with colon cancer. There are large nodes in the peripancreatic region. To me, this is unusual. Colon doesn't go to adrenal all that commonly, but bilateral adrenal, cystic necrotic, and very large. That is surely atypical, but again, making the point, there's a range of appearances with METs, and just looking at the METs, and not going to help you determine the primary. So again, a very nice example. And here it is in the coronal view, the extensive necrosis. If you said pheochromocytoma, I would consider that. If you said other metastasis, I would consider that. It doesn't really look like lymphoma unless it was treated. It's too cystic. ACC bilateral is exceedingly rare, so I would not be thinking about that. Here's a patient with bilateral adrenal masses, non-contrast, oval, nothing very specific about them. 
If you look carefully, you see the left kidney, but you don't see the right. Of course, maybe it's a lower lying kidney, but this patient had previously had a right nephrectomy for clear cell renal cell carcinoma. You can see the METs are very vascular with areas of necrosis. And here is actually part of the kidney. So you can see that only the patient had a partial nephrectomy, but just a really nice example of adrenal metastasis from renal cell carcinoma. Here's another patient, large left adrenal mass. Again, differential diagnosis would be extensive. Here you do see the entire right kidney removed. This is not vascular like the other case. It could be almost anything from a primary ACC to metastasis to even an old hematoma. But considering the history, you got to go where the money is. And this was metastatic renal to the adrenal gland. And you can see some of the neovascularity, which again can be seen with primary tumors as well as metastasis. And renal cell mets to the adrenal commonly a very vascular. And just here's the washout images in that case. In patients with renal cell or hepatoma who undergo dedicated adrenal CT for known adrenal lesions, the percentage enhancement washout of adrenal mets is similar to that of lipid poor adenomas. The point I'm making here is these lesions are very vascular and vascular lesions can wash out like pheos where it could be a good washout value and then you would say, oh, it's a lipid poor adenoma. So if you have a history of RCC or HCC, uh, you can't use that washout in determining what a lesion is. Now, sometimes the lesions are large, looking like primary tumors. This is a non-small cell lung cancer. A little bit unusual that it's so necrotic. Again, METS could be a primary. Here was hepatoma, cirrhotic liver, a patient had hepatoma, large bilateral adrenal lesions. Just a really, really nice example of bilateral METS. You could think about lymphoma here. You could think about METS from other possibilities. But again, if you have hepatoma, your work is made a whole lot easier. And here's the coronal views very nicely showing you the bilateral adrenal metastasis. And again, very, very nicely shown areas of necrosis and hemorrhage. All of that's really nicely shown on the cinematic rendering. I'll mention that in terms of metastasis, I showed you a lung cancer, a non-small cell to be specific, that was very large. When I see METs that are bilateral and large, I think about melanoma, which was this case where the lesions are slightly vascular, but not very vascular. I think about hepatoma. I think about renal cell carcinoma. There's nothing really specific about melanoma in this case. Bilateral masses in the adrenal left larger than the right. Now, there are other unusual entities that involve the adrenal gland. And what I think I'll do is let's take a break here and let's come back and start speaking about lymphoma. I'll see you in a few minutes. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.